Howdy Church, welcome to today's message. Uh, we're still running the theme of understanding and uh, this morning I want to bring to you a word called Understanding Jesus and the Invalid and it's coming from the book of John in the New Testament chapter 5 verses 1 to 15 and uh, so I just want to start with that so get, get your Bibles out um, if you're with a group of people or with your family, go to John chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. That's where I'll be speaking from this morning. But before I do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray that, uh, Lord, ears will be attentive. Lord, hearts will be attentive. And, uh, Lord, eyes will see what you want to uh, show us this morning. And, and, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that your blessing will be upon each household uh, that are tuning in this morning to this word and uh, we thank you for your word we just pray lord empty me of myself and holy spirit fill me afresh may i see with your eyes hear with your ears and speak with your heart we just pray these things in jesus name amen well as i said we're uh understanding jesus and the invalid and some of us live lives that never begin to reach their full potential it's almost as like we live in this straight jacket that though it confines and constrict us to some that feel safe but to some not uh, it's the only thing that we've known so it feels kind of protective even though it's restrictive in the close encounter with jesus that we look at today he asks a very important question it's a question that I guess it's not to be taken lightly or responded to quickly. And uh, today I'm going to be saying some things that are going to make you question and, and, and talk about, say so in your groups and that. It's, it's good to dialogue and have the pastor for lunch, more or less. Um, so I want, you to, I want you to think about some of these questions and what I'm about to say. So the question is, do you want to be well? Do you? want to be whole so those questions do you want to be well and do you want to be whole a lot of us today choose to live our lives in sickness a lot of a lot of us choose to live our lives in addiction and sin or dysfunction rather than make the tough call and accept the unfamiliarity of a new life in jesus christ now, John chapter 5, verses 1-6 says this, Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the pool of Bethsaida, with five covered porches, crowds of sick people, blind, lame, and paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew how long it had been, he'd been ill, he asked him, would you like to get well? Well, let me start with this question. Why doesn't Jesus heal everybody in the pool? You know, the site contained a large group of people, we're told, and, and they were all suffering. You know, there were people who'd been there that were blind their whole lives and never seen their mum or dad or brothers and sisters and, and they wanted to see um, there were people whose bodies didn't work they they couldn't walk to the temple to worship they couldn't even engage in craft or with their hands john tells us there was all this suffering going on all around this pool but jesus only heals one person why just this man it's not because Jesus doesn't know about all the suffering. He does. It's not because of the lack of compassion on Jesus' part. But maybe it's because this is the only man who really has enough faith to get healed. Now, this is a very common teaching in our day. You see, it proclaimed, it's proclaimed by high-profile, hugely popular faith healers on TV every day. If you believe enough, if you claim boldly enough, you can be healed. You can expect a miracle. 
And, and the corollary is as if individuals or a church is not experiencing dramatic healing, then it's because they lack faith. Now, maybe this is a story to show that miracles only go to those whose faith is strong enough to claim them. But let's take a closer look. And I'd like, to, I'd like you to notice that we're told that Jesus approaches this man. Now, this man is at the pool every day, probably made his living there as a beggar. And usually in stories of healing, the person who wants to be healed comes to Jesus, but not here. You see, Jesus initiates this contact. And then you notice the question Jesus asks, do you want to get well? Well, what, what, what kind of a question is that? Do you want to get well? I mean, how many of you have ever asked a stupid question? I'm not saying that Jesus' question was stupid, but when you look at it, you may think it is because it's like, why would you ask that? There's a reason for it. But how many of you have ever asked a stupid question? You know, I have a great example of a stupid question. There was one time the man was on a plane and sitting, he was sitting on a newspaper and uh, somebody asked him next to him, said, oh, are you reading that newspaper? And the man said, yes, I am. And he stood up and he turned the page over and he sat back down on it. Or parents, or parents, we sometimes ask stupid questions to our kids, don't we? Like, like the, the best question is, did you do that? knowing full well that your kids did that and then it goes on and on and on you know we all ask dumb questions and it's kind of an occupational hazard of being a, a, a human but Jesus is posing a question here and it's got to make you scratch your head the answer seems a little obvious doesn't it now why would you ask a man who's been an invalid for 38 years do you want to get well who wouldn't want to get well? Isn't that the whole point of him lying by the pool day after day? It, it seems rather callous, doesn't it? Now keep that question in mind because we'll come back to it. Now notice the man's response in John chapter 5 verse 7. I can't, sir, the sick man said. I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm trying to get there, somebody else always gets in ahead of me. Now, there was a kind of spring or artesian well at this pool. And uh, when it's bubbling up, there is an old tradition there that, that that's a superstition uh, that when an angel was stirring up the waters and whoever got in uh, to the pool first would be healed. But people sometimes have a tendency to want to make healing into a mechanism or a technique that they can manipulate or control. You know, it may well be that that's what was going on with this guy. At any rate, Jesus asked him, do you want to be whole? Do you want to get well? And the man doesn't actually answer Jesus' question. He doesn't say yes. He just gives a reason why he hasn't been able to be the first one to get into the water when it's stirred up. Now, it's been going on for 38 years. In 38 years, he might have gotten a whole lot of people in the community or friends together to get him down into the water. I mean, there's a story of a man more disabled than this, a, a, a paralyzed guy who's, whose friends got him through a far more difficult challenge and broke through the roof to see Jesus. Now he might have saved up enough money from begging and paid someone to get him into down into the water. He might have had himself laid by the water so he could be right next to it and just at the right time he could just roll into it. And what's more amazing here than his excuses is that this man doesn't even reply to a clear offer Jesus is making to him here. Jesus doesn't ask the man, how come you haven't gotten into the pool? He asks, do you want to get well? And this man never says, yes, could you do that? I put my trust in you. Please heal me. He just gives excuses why he can't make it down to the water. Now, there are very there are a wide amount of... Uh, Amounts of faith people approach Jesus with, but 
But here in John chapter 5, Jesus doesn't even pursue the issue with this man. And that's frustrating. You know, there, there are no questions. There's no sparring. There's no, uh, there's no conflict or, or what, what are you saying to me? Or, or wow, really? It, it, he doesn't ask this man, do you believe? He doesn't even ask him a second time if he wants to be well. And another thing is that there is no indication that this man had a greater faith than everybody else in the pool. There is no indication that this man had any faith at all. Apparently, Jesus doesn't view acts of healing primarily as a relief of suffering to be given out to those who have high enough levels of certainty. He performs this act of healing to reveal his identity. To authenticate his mission as the son of God. That's what he's doing. So he cuts right to the chase with, the, with, with this guy. And he says in John 5, 8, he says, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat and walk. And the guy does. <laughs> I just want to pause here for a moment. Can Jesus heal? The obvious answer is yes, he can. But I think it's accurate to say that Jesus' primary purpose in healing in the New Testament is not the elimination of suffering. Okay, let me say that again. Jesus' primary purpose in healing in the New Testament is not the elimination of suffering. Okay, that will come one day, guaranteed, that will, when we're in eternity. He is committed to that. But that day has not come yet. Now, please listen to this. His primary purpose, okay, was to let people know his identity so they could trust him and find life in him. Can Jesus heal? Yes, yes, he can. He is a master over every phase of reality. Can we make healing happen by having enough faith? No. I'll say that question again. Can we make healing happen by having enough faith? No. Here's a true story from John Ottenberg. I have a friend whose brother is, is a long-time pastor and is deeply into the belief that Christians have enough faith will be healed of anything, absolutely anything. If you have any sickness, any injury, he believes that you have enough faith, you'll be healed of it. A little ironically, this guy is, is bald and he believes that if he had enough faith, he would have had a hair full of hair. Now, psych psychologically speaking, that is a little bit wacko. Okay, teaching people that lack of healing indicates a lack of faith does massive spiritual damage and contradicts the plain teaching of scriptures. Now, it neglects the biblical record of the Apostle Paul, who, despite his prayers, was never delivered from his thorn in his flesh. Now, did he believe in healing and the power of the Holy Spirit in healing? Of course he did. It neglects the biblical record that suffering, including physical suffering, was the norm, but not the exception for Jesus' closest followers. Jesus is the master of healing. And Jesus invites us to partner with him in prayer. Will he heal? He could and he can. But whether he heals in this life or the life to come isn't always for us to know. See, when healing comes, whenever it comes, it always comes as a mystery and a gift. You know, one day it came to this man in Bethsaida. Now, back to the story. I, I want you to put yourselves in the scene, okay? I want you to put yourselves in the scene. For 38 years, this man has been crippled. He's been living as a beggar without help or hope. Now, in our day, let's, let's make it contemporary. That would mean since 1982, I mean, some of you probably weren't even born then, but and some of you were were born then, um, 1982. So from 1982 until right now, day after day, month after month, year after year, okay? And then in an instant, this man, Jesus, comes and heals him. 
what's the man do? Does he bathe Jesus' feet in tears of love? Is he in awe? Is he in amazement? Is he is he just like, oh my goodness, this is awesome, like, like you and I would be after 38 years? Does he run back to Jesus and pour out his gratitude? Does he tell everyone the good news about Jesus, that he's healed? And does he dance off and run around the place? No, he doesn't say a word. He doesn't do a thing. He just picks up his mat and walks away. It, it, it gets worse. In John 5.10, it says, The Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. It's illegal to carry you that sleeping mat. You know, they, they look at this man and they don't see a miracle. They see a violated sap, okay, that's, that's breaking the religious laws to work on the day of rest because he's carrying his mat, it was work, that carrying his actual mat around the place was actually work. It's nuts. Now notice the man's response in chapter 5, verse 11 and 13. The man who healed me said to me, the man who healed me? Really? Okay. The man who healed me said to me, pick up your sleeping mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that? They demanded. And the man didn't know. For Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. I don't know. I, I, I didn't catch his name. He, he, he got away too fast. I can't even remember what he looked like. You know, this man didn't even bother to find out the name of the one that healed him after 38 years of helplessness and hopelessness. And it gets worse. Once again, it's Jesus taking the initiative with the man. And in John 5, 14, later Jesus found the healed man in the temple and said to him, Now you are well. Stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. Ooh. Now the clear meaning here being that he has been involved in some ongoing sin since the healing that Jesus was telling him uh, must end. Now, he clings to the old way of life, his old brokenness. Why? Maybe because it's easy. Maybe because that's what he's used to. Maybe he's, he, he's addicted to something or, or he's, he's just, you know, you know what it's like. It's just too easy to live like that. And maybe because he's afraid to try anything else. You know, a lot of us sometimes are too scared to get out of our bubble and experience something new. And that's what Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and me so we could experience a new day every day, renew our mind every day. Well, whatever is going on, Jesus, who cannot stand to see a human being choose to throw away their life, speaks very stern words to him. Stop sinning. You know, something worse will happen. There's, that there are worse things than physical suffering. You know, it's possible to choose to live with a deformed soul. Stop sinning. Something worse may happen. Now, this is the climatic moment in the story. This is, the, this is what hinges on everything, everything that turns, even more than physical healing, okay? Now, this is, this is the man's moment. This is his moment. And Jesus watches. Will the man get it? Will he, will he fall to his knees? Will he repent of his sin? Will he receive healing for his soul? No. He just turns and walks away. Then the, then the man went to find the Jewish leaders and told them it was Jesus who had healed him. You know, this is the beginning of the persecution of Jesus. The religious leaders began to try to kill him from that very moment. And they wouldn't stop until they succeeded. And it begins with this man. That Jesus would pay this for his life. 
with his life, sorry. Do you want to get well? Jesus asked. Do you want to get well? Well, you understand he's speaking not just about physical healing here. He uses quite a rare word and it could be translated as whole. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to leave this way of life? Do you want to turn and follow my way? Jesus asks. Understand, there will be some changes. You won't be seen as a victim anymore. You, 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 you have to be. You have to embrace new challenges, new responsibilities. Do you want this? Really? My question to you out there: Do you really want this? You know, there's a kind of a cost to wholeness, and Jesus offered to. Offer to heal was not and is not a promise to a problem-free, suffering-free life. You know, I know people have been healed of cancer. And does that make their life now because they've been healed of cancer that, that they can live a beautiful life? No, there's still life struggles and, and other things going on. You know, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing when he asked this question. Do you want to be known as the one who was healed by me? Do you want to be associated with me? Do you want to take the heat and the opposition from powerful forces that that will involve? Do you want to be pressured and persecuted for my sake? No, the man did not. He would prefer to betray the one who healed him. Now, he wanted to avoid suffering, maybe, but he didn't want to be whole. He didn't want to be sound. So let me ask you, do you want to be whole? Do you want to be whole? Really? If you do, you need to know this. We cannot fix ourselves. Okay, we live in a world where we walk into many bookstores and you can find self-help read books that, and go to seminars that were, that's all about how to fix up your life. Well, honestly, I've been down that road. I've tried to fix myself in many areas, but I tell you what, if I don't have the Holy Spirit, if I don't have Jesus Christ in my life, there is not a chance that I can do that. But in his power, in his strength, and in his way, and in his love, his grace, his mercy, man, I'm on my way. Now ponder for a few moments. Do I really want to be whole? Ask the person next to you, do you really want to be whole? You know, some of us have become so comfortable in our dysfunction that it, that it feels normal. And I think some of you probably know that and understand that. Quite honestly, it's frightening to try to live any other way. We, so we choose to live in a straitjacket of addiction or enabling or codependency or ongoing sin with all its restrictions rather than be free in Christ. Do you remember those years of adolescence when you were so excited and, and, and so scared by the new freedoms you had? You know, at times you just wanted to be a child and, 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 and young people, when you come to 18, you, you'll understand this and, and keep this in mind. And for you, you people that are 18 now, that are going through this and those that are older that went through it, at times you just wanted to be a child, you know, you, to have that protection of a loving parent. Oh, I don't know if I want to be an adult. I, I, I want to be in the protection of my home. And then the very next moment you rebel against the imposition of rules and regulations. Maybe you're, maybe you're f facing physical brokenness, an injury or an illness. Maybe you're afraid of what the future is going to look like. Maybe you're suffering from, a, from emotional brokenness, going through real deep waters of depression or, or sadness that you can't fix yourself. Maybe you're experiencing relational brokenness right now. 
Maybe your marriage is hurting or, or has hurt and, and, and you're trying to hide so nobody knows and you hardly admit it to yourself. You know, maybe you're desperately worried about the one, one of your kids or one of your parents or a friend. Maybe you feel so alone. You know, some of you I know are in the grip of some pattern of habit of addiction or sin and, and you keep telling yourself that it's going to change, that you're going to change and, and you're going to keep trying just to settle or, or, or manage it. Maybe you feel broken by failure financially, vocationally, as, as a parent or maybe just as a Christian. Whatever your situation is, whatever your situation is, Jesus Christ can bring wholeness to you today he can he did it to me and he can do it to you there are three simple things you can do and this isn't a recipe or, or like a recipe theology here this is just what i have gleaned on and what i've learned over the years of having a relationship with jesus christ number one admit your issues to god it takes courage to break old habits now, I know this guy that has lost everything to alcoholism and gambling and, and, and a family member gave him a second chance and a place to stay at a respectable job. He, he did the deal for a while, but he didn't really ask or seek God for the solution. And he's now one step from being homeless again. You know, he doesn't want to get well. You know, you've got to admit your issues. Put them on the table. Or even go to a fellow Christian or, or a person that's, that, that, that's walking with Christ that you look and say, gee, that guy's, I want what that guy's got. Go and ask that person what he's got. And if it's Jesus Christ, he's a Christian, ask him. Just lay everything into the table because you know what? Every Christian, every person that says he's a child of God will embrace you, should embrace you and say, come on, let's do this journey together. I'm going to help you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm not going to condemn you, but I'm going to help you walk through this. Number two, acknowledge your part. Stop blaming someone else or, 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 or some experience that you may have, may have happened to you years ago. You know, you've got to stop that. You've got to wake up and smell the roses, okay? Are you enabling the behavior of someone that has a serious problem? You know, sometimes as parents, we, we enable, we can enable our children or loved ones by caring for them too much in our sense, in our worldly sense. You know... Love gets defined in unhealthy ways. It is, it is seen as permissiveness and, and cleaning up the mess instead of taking the tough love approach. And number three, claim God's promises and ask for his help. You see, when we're in Christ and we are new creatures, we're a new creation, to many of us, we just want to rework the old self. And we try to rework the old self. We never allow God to make us new. And I just, I just want to tell you now, as soon as you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are a new creation. You don't have to try to become a new creation. You are a new creation. Believe it and receive that gift. You know, we talked a couple of weeks ago about how Jesus told Nicodemus to be born of the Spirit. And with the help of God's Spirit within us, we can overcome and control issues that have held us captive all our lives. Question. Do you want to be whole? Right now, do you want to be whole? If the answer is yes, I want to be whole, I want you to pray along with me. Do you want to give your life to Jesus? Do you want to follow Jesus Christ, the Son of God? If the answer is yes, I want you to pray along with me now. If you want to be a new creation, do you want to put the old behind you? Do you want to put the addiction and the sin and the, and, and the chains that are, that are binding you up? the guilt and the shame. Do you, want to, do you want to throw that away and never look back at it, but look forward to a new life, a new creation? Well, if the answer is yes, I want you to pray along with me. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come to you today. Lord, I thank you for what you have done in my life. Lord, I was blind, but now I see. Lord, I was broken, and you put me back together. Lord, over the years, I've seen you do that to so many people. So many people. So, Lord, today, Lord, I come to you again, and Lord, I ask you to forgive my sins. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I, I acknowledge you as the Son of God. I, I acknowledge you that you went to the cross for me. And Lord, on the third day you rose again so that I may live life in eternity. Hallelujah. With you. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. I, want, I make you Lord of my life. I want to follow you. Holy Spirit, fill me afresh right now. Fill me to overflowing. And I pray, Holy Spirit, you will guide me. You will strengthen me. Lord, that I will call upon you in times I need wisdom. And Lord, that you will, you will show me and fill me and, and, and direct my path. Heavenly Father, I pray, help me not to look back. Help me not to be addicted to the things that are that are that are tearing me up but lord give me a fresh outlook lord let me see with your eyes let me hear with your ears and let me speak with your heart i just pray these mighty things in the mighty name of jesus christ amen well may god richly bless you if you have prayed that for the first time, if you have become or you, you, you want to know more about uh, God's word, more know about Jesus and, and all these stories that are in the Bible that help us grow, uh, please contact us at the office, office or, or drop us a line or an email. It's kerry at hillside.org.au. Uh, I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to speak with you on, on have an email. Um, but yeah. We'd love to send you something too. So God bless you. God richly bless you. And uh, have a great week. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.